This video will describe the basic science of platelet-rich plasma. My name is Dr. Alan Mishra, and for further information, please visit apexprp.com, A-P-E-X-P-R-P.com. Platelet-rich plasma is a component of whole blood that has been proposed for a variety of clinical applications, including chronic tendinitis, wound healing, cartilage or disc regeneration, and even cardiac applications. What we need to first understand is the basic science. In this short video, we'll go over some of that. Whole blood is composed of a variety of components, including red blood cells, a variety of white blood cells, and then tiny little fragments called platelets. These platelets typically are involved in physiologic function as a hemostatic sealant. In other words, they stop bleeding. They can also, however, be a scaffold for tissue regeneration, growth factor concentration, and even stem cell binding. So platelets have a variety of functions. In a peripheral blood smear, platelets can be seen scattered even at a high power infrequently. In platelet-rich plasma, however, the platelets can be seen much more often and in a much more concentrated amount. Now, why is this important? Well, that is in a resting state, platelets look spherical, but in an activated state, they spill a variety of uh, molecules that are inside them called proteins that are also known as growth factors or cytokines. And these cytokines increase linearly with platelet concentration. What does that mean? It basically means that the more platelets you have, the more growth factors you have. And why are these growth factors important? Growth factors perform a variety of functions within your body. One is called chemotaxis, and that is directional movement in response to a chemical stimulus. So in other words, a cell can move in a particular direction. Stem cells can also be attracted to these growth factors and then migrate into the area. Proliferation, which is cell div division in response to a stimulus, is another function of growth factors. And finally, platelet signaling. Growth factors bind to a cell membrane and can, and, and, uh, can promote cell division. We'll go over some of the details of that. Now, what happens essentially is that on the cell membrane, there's a little receptor sticking out of the, of the uh, membrane that when that growth factor binds to that receptor then causes some intraarticular, excuse me, intracellular changes, maybe even all the way down to the DNA level, producing different proteins or different, changing the function of that cell. That's how those growth factors work. Now, what are some of the growth factors seen in PRP? And there's a lot of different ones seen in PRP, and we're going to just go over really three of them now, just for examples. One is PDGF, or platelet-derived growth factor, which is chemoattractive, meaning it, it attracts white blood cells and mesenchymal stem cells. Transforming growth factor beta, also known as TGF beta, promotes cell mitosis. Mitosis is just another word for division or dividing. And it also significantly increase, increases type 1 collagen production in tendons, and that was uh, published a while ago and will, is, as a value when discussing the use of PRP for tendonitis. And then finally, VEGF, or v, um, vascular endothelial growth factor, which stimulates angiogenesis or blood vessel formation. Paper was published a few years ago, which shows that these three, as, a, as well as a variety of others, significantly increase in concentration over whole blood in platelet-rich plasma. So PRP is a concentrated uh, form of a variety of powerful growth factors. Now, how do you get PRP? PR, there's a variety of different ways to do that. One of the simplest ways is uh, seen and demonstrated here. You draw at about 55 cc's, and th this is now, it can be as little as about 30 cc's of peripheral blood out of a vein, and this is just drawing it out of the elbow. Place that blood into a small little plastic canister, and then put it into a centrifuge for about 15 minutes at 3200 RPMs. You then remove the canister, and you can see that the blood now is separated into components. You remove the platelet-poor plasma, which is uh, seen on top here in yellow. The platelet-rich plasma is trapped in this particular device in between two buoys. And then the packed red blood cells are, are seen uh, in the bottom here. You shake this canister vigorously after removing the PPP for 30 seconds. And then what you do is remove the PRP. And this is what PRP looks, looks like. Essentially looks like a little bit 
uh, less dense form of uh, blood. Uh, and you can see it in this particular picture right here. Now, again, what is PRP used, potentially used for? There's a variety of cell culture studies. Uh, there's published studies that support its use in chronic elbow tendinosis, wound healing, and then it's now being investigated for cartilage regeneration and even spine disc regeneration. This has been the basic science of platelet-rich plasma. My name is Dr. Alan Mishra, and for further information, again, visit the website at apexprp.com, apexprp.com, and in our next module, we will go over cell culture studies and platelet-rich plasma. Thank you for listening.